SpaceX manufacturing has just humiliated the entire rocket industry. Elon Musk used what he learned in physics to revolutionize the rocket industry and the way people think about the existence of space. He initially used technology to change the engineering concept of automobiles, looking at the carbon IV oxide gas, which is a fatal pollution generated by both combustion engines and large industrial plants. Elon realized that something had to be done about power engines to lessen the pollution emitted on a regular basis. He then accepted the challenge of innovating battery-powered, super-efficient EVs that takes customer satisfaction, revealing seductive taste of dazzling luxury and maintaining advanced technology that is highly desired by 21st century society. Musk, the space guru, also used his brilliant engineering design style to create a device known as the Starship, which he believes might take people to other planets, particularly the Moon and Mars. In this video, we'll discuss how SpaceX rocket production humiliated the rocket industry, whilst also changing the paradigm of space launch and exploration. This is TechSpace. If you're new here, we specially invite you to join many of our lovely fans. Kindly subscribe and click on the notification bell. It motivates us to produce more fantastic content like this and you'll have a lifetime access to all of our high-end tech videos. Today's rockets are extraordinary examples of human creativity with roots in past science and technology. They are natural byproducts of literally thousands of years of rocket propulsion study and research. Before we show you how the SpaceX rocket changes everything, let us first explore how rocket engineering began in the olden days. Rockets are subjected to incredible g-forces at liftoff, as well as severe hot areas where aerodynamic friction is strongest and extreme cold owing to liquid hydrogen or oxygen at cryogenic temperatures. Operating a rocket is a balancing act and the line between a successful launch and a disastrous blowout is sometimes as thin as a razor's edge. Fortunately for us, we live at a moment when rocketry is experiencing another golden age. Commercial rocket companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin are bringing new life to an industry dominated by government-funded space programs. The history of rocketry may be divided into two eras. First, there was early pre-scientific tinkering, and then there's the post-enlightenment scientific method. The fundamental idea of rocket propulsion has essentially stayed unchanged, although the details of functioning and our approach to developing rocketry have changed dramatically. Two historic instances perfectly show the core idea of rocket propulsion which is to spew hot gases through a nozzle and create velocity in the opposite direction. Aulus Gellius, a Roman writer, narrates the account of Architas, who made a flying pigeon out of wood around 400 BC. A jet of steam or compressed air emerging through a nozzle propelled the pigeon into the air. Hero of Alexandria invented the Aeoli pile three centuries later, based on the same premise of employing escaping steam as a propellant fluid. A hollow sphere was connected to a water bath by tubing in the aeoli pile, which also acted as a primitive sort of bearing, supporting the sphere in mid-air. A fire beneath the water basin generated steam, which was driven into the sphere through the linked tubing. The gas could only leave through two L-shaped vents pointing in opposite directions. The leaking steam created a moment around the hinged support, causing the sphere to rotate around its axis. The wood pigeon and aeoli pile have little resemblance to what we would call a rocket. Truly, the precise date when rockets first emerged was around 100 AD, when the Chinese produced gunpowder, a mixture of saltpeter, sulfur, and charcoal dust. For religious festivals, gunpowder was employed to make colorful sparks, smokes, and explosive devices out of hollow bamboo sticks that were closed up at one end. Although some of these bamboo tubes may have started flying off or skittering around the ground, the Chinese began fiddling with the gunpowder-filled bamboo sticks and connected them to arrows. This generated thrust to launch the rocket in the direction of the capped end of the tube, with the long stick functioning as a rudimentary guiding system, very similar to firework rockets we use today. Sir Isaac Newton established the scientific foundations of rocketry during the Enlightenment. His three laws of motion states as follows. The first is that unless a net force acts on a body in a certain reference frame, it will remain in a condition of constant velocity, moving or at rest. 
The second, the net force exerted on a body creates an acceleration proportional to its inertia or mass. Third, a force exerted by one body or another causes an equal and opposite reaction force to be exerted on the first body. Every student of basic physics is familiar with these laws. In fact, the three rules were probably intuitively recognized by early rocket designers, but by formalizing them, they were intentionally employed as design criteria. The first law explains why rockets move in the first place. The rocket will remain stationary if no propellant thrust is generated. The second measures the amount of thrust generated by a rocket at a given point in time, that is, for a certain mass, m. And the third law describes how, as a result of mass evacuation, a pushing force is created on the rocket. During World War II, both the United States and the Soviet Union began aggressively sponsoring research into intercontinental ballistic missiles, partly because they had the ability to transport nuclear bombs over large distances, and also, the allure of being the first to fly to space was appealing. The US Army mated a seized V-2 rocket with a WAC Corporal rocket in 1948 to create the biggest two-stage rocket ever launched in the US. This two-stage rocket was known as the Bumper WAC, and it achieved a peak height of 400 kilometers over the course of six flights, almost exactly to the altitude where the International Space Station ISS, orbits today. One issue that the Soviets did not resolve was atmospheric re-entry. Any object that intends to circle another planet must travel at a fast enough speed. Space Shuttle was NASA's final significant breakthrough. It was intended to create a reusable rocket system capable of transporting personnel and payload into low Earth orbit. The reasoning for this approach is because producing rocket components contributes greatly to the overall launch costs, and permitting separate stages to be destroyed after launch is not cost-effective. Consider having to dispose the Boeing 747 or Airbus A380 every time you fly from London to New York. In this situation, ticket prices would not be where they are now. Of course, it will be hiked, and it would be very difficult to acquire a seat for like twice a day. Blue Origin, Amazon founder Jeff Bezos' rocket company, is adopting a similar approach to reusability and cheaper launch costs by using vertical takeoff and landing. Yes, Blue Origin is also pursuing a space mission and is conducting rocketry research. With the commercialization of spaceflight, however, new incumbents are now working on even more difficult aims. The Falcon 9 rocket from SpaceX has shown to be a highly dependable launch vehicle, with a current success rate of 20 out of 22 launches. Also, SpaceX was the first commercial firm to successfully launch and retrieve an orbital spacecraft, the Dragon capsule, which feeds the International Space Station with supplies and new scientific equipment on a regular basis. Currently, the United States relies on the Russian Soyuz rocket to transport men to the International Space Station, but manned trips with the Dragon capsule are scheduled for the near future. SpaceX, on the other hand, is swiftly altering the history of space research and rocket launch. Elon Musk and his space industry brought dozens of new, novel ideas that altered the course of the tale. The company originally worked on Falcon rockets before shifting to another space rocket that turns out to produce even more mind-blowing marvels than we expected. It can only be the Starship. It altered our expectations of how a rocket could function in space. Consider its size, the use of stainless steel to cut production costs, and the Raptor engine. Where other rocket engines may use two to six engines, the Super Heavy booster will lift off with about 29 to 33 engines. Also, talking about the Super Heavy breaking off from the first stage Starship and landing on the Mechazilla catcher. And when the first stage Starship finally arrives from space on the launch pad, the catcher will implore its cable to catch it from the ground and properly place it on the boost. And as soon as all of this is completed, the Starship will be ready for another immediate launch, which is what SpaceX refers to as reusability. If you believe I've missed any upgrades to the SpaceX rocket, please let us know in the comment section below. Again, how will you explain how SpaceX eventually dominated the whole space industry? Please do well to share your thoughts in the comment section below. Until next time, please like, share, subscribe, and whilst you're still around, why don't you click on one of those flashing videos on the screen for more content.